Welcome back, my name is Mulligan and this is Firewatch. Let's start right in. Empty game. Let's start a new game. Let's see what we have what this game has in store for us. Campus Center, okay, presents. Until now everything is, uh, is okay. Everything is fantastic. Okay, we see some color. Okay, I probably don't... Let me, let me get this. Okay, mouse is gone. You see Julia. Julia. Whatever you prefer, Julia. I think it's better. Oh! I have to click on it. Okay! She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well-dressed professors and great grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with her pass. You approach her. You are drunk. Um... Yeah, you, you are pretty. Or so... What's you know, Major? You slur the word Major and it smells like coarse. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. Oh, cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? Question mark? Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asked if you, you if you want to split the cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. So, you are a student, she's a professor. Okay, got it. Maybe you are a professor too, I don't know. Nice music. Use left mouse button to interact with objects. Backpack. I now have a backpack. I'm happy about that. Um, I want to go to another... Uh, okay. Then I'm staying here. Okay. Let's see. We have a uh, load gear. Sure. Our backpack. That was a lot of gear. You date for over a year. She dives, drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You're moving in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. But... Julia wants to get a dog. I hope the dog is okay. Fuck you if the dog dies. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Uh, we could pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket, or adopt the Shepherd and name him Mayhem. She's a professor, and I probably am one too, for a student. But we should be able to get both. I mean, they're dogs. So having two dogs is most is better as one so they can play with one another if you don't have time you know as professor probably not much time left so you could uh, have both but because i'm nuts about her and i love her it seems a lot i'm going with her suggestion but it's a good dog and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one julia loves him you love him too like I love you, yeah, it seems. 1979, you talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9 p.m., 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off of the highest desert. What do you think about kids, she asked. Kids, you are not very smart or good that, that much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple of little idiots. Um... That is interesting. I don't know anything about me. 
Am I a student? Am I a professor? Do I have a job? If I have a job, uh, probably kids would be good. I mean, she's a professor. If I don't have a job, I could stay at home. She could work, so... Or, you know, kids need most of the time someone to talk to, to have as a person to look up to, you know? But, you know, if I'm nuts over her, sure, that would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Hmm, interesting. Um, so this is the dialogue between us, the past, it seems. Because I don't have her here now. We have a hat. We pick up the hat. We examine the hat. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Put on. Howdy. Sure, let's put it on. Uh, what about our backpack? Do we have our backpack? Sure, seems okay. What do we have here? Uh, do not forget to check in. Now fireworks warning. Sorrowfair trail is not recommended for inexperienced experienced hikers. Therefore, uh, Sorrowfair is a prim primitive backcountry trail. You are in their country. Learn to live with bears. Uh, two forks. I have no idea where I am. Where is the uh, you are here little, little button? You are nowhere on this map. Good. So let's go hiking. Let's go hiking. Pretty good looking word. Oh, we get some more stuff. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. I fight. You get mad, you ignore her. I mean, she she had fun. I mean, I, I'm trusting her, so... If I only have those two choices, I, I ignore her. You know, for the evening and the next morning you could talk. We don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold into, onto a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work, you know? Sorry about the stuff yesterday. I was grumpy. I don't know. Sorry. What was your evening, you know? A normal conversation. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plans from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. What would I do? I would probably do something like this. Very nice. Do I see a picture? No. No, still hiking. My, my legs are really short. Am I a kid? Am I, am I shy? Yet? It's hard to see. But it seems I'm pretty small. And the sun is setting, which is unsettling. Why am I outside when the sun is setting? What do we have here? Two forks, eight miles, fire lookout. So I want to go to the fire lookout. Space bar, climb over obstructions. Yeah, sun is still setting. You have eight miles for, uh, before you, so. 1992, during the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town that brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Fuck the dog. Julia yells. 
Uh huh. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she's stressed. Confront the attacker. You scare him away or you beat his goddamn face in. Um. I don't know. What would I. Okay, here. Here's the thing, yeah? If I had a dog, and I do have a dog in real life, and I would get Mark, and he would kick my dog, and I would be. Uh, I would be brave enough to scare him away or beat him, I would fucking beat his face in. Because no one touches my dog. I mean, you can, you can pet him. It's a nice dog. But you are not going to get away with you hurting my dog at all. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia, Julia asked to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Which is not that much safer. 1994. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at jail. Jail's in Connecticut, 2000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move move. You absolutely do not. Oh, convince her to not take the job or agree if she commutes back and forth. That's 2,000 miles. This is not a, uh, okay, I have to drive one hour and oh, I'm there. This is, you can't commute. I mean, what you could do is Go fly there or go there at Sunday evening, come back Friday evening, which would mean only the weekend. So I would say I would try to convince her. I would probably move with her, depending on the situation. Uh, but uh, the whole week not be able to see each other is really hard. So convince her. You tell her that this means you two won't have a family. She say, says that's bullshit. She's totally right. She says if her taking the job means you won't come with her, you say yes. Again, bullshit. But she decides not to take it. 1985. Julia is asked to leave Boulder on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research books, sorry. She didn't remember she had heavily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it? You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. I mean, you guys should talk to someone or we try to forget. You know, we could talk. Why not? After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. You both decide to keep it secret for now. Oh, uh, okay, I see. I see. This is a fucking depressing story. Why am I playing this? Pick up the journal. Would probably... Okay. Nice showing of the ring. We get it. This is probably... She is... She has trouble. And that is the reason she's not here. Back it is getting older. Julia comments the comments that it's kind of nice. Because she gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in chambers. She drives her car to the town, next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. 
Other days you get a stranger. She piss, pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Nineteen eighty eight. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Jan Danielle, the nurse. He suggests Daniel Daniel the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else. Somewhere with twenty four hour care. A home. It sits with you for a couple months. You decide to move her into a full time care facility. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. Oh, I could, could I not move with her into the full time care facility? Um, I mean, I, I would try to take care, care of her myself. Next day. Okay, let's. I don't know. Go down the path. Okay, let's see. So. Oh. I have the feeling something bad is going to happen. Hello. Bye. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter too. Drinking then too. Uh -huh. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you are gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door? What? No. You trust that she sleeps like a rock. You can't, you can't, you can't block the door. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You are home and in bed by 1 a.m. couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night you are stopped at a do at a do you I checkpoint DUI. You blow a point one zero and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister in law Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you will visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer's coming and you see an ad in the page for a job. You take it. Ah, we are at the lookout tower. Finally. So, she gets worse and worse. I'm not able to take care of her and myself. I'm not able to do that, it seems. So, they take her in. Which is the right thing to do. Pro I probably would have had to call them and say that I can't do it anymore for reasons. So this is the lookout tower. You definitely can uh, look out everywhere. You have some gas. And let's see. Why am I here? This has probably to do with Julia, I would think. Turn on the power. Hello. Hello, Two Forks 
tower? Sure. How about now? Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Contact supervisor on radio. Cookbook. Okay, come on here. I know you're there. Your lights are on. Yep, hello. Hold left shift to activate radio. Hello. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... What, sleep? Forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. You've killed three ex-husbands. You are rebelling against your against mom. Nobody back home can stand you. Probably this. Okay, um, you're probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids, by the sound of your voice, at least 15 years ago. You come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? Well, she also says I fuck immature men, but in my defense, who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? Me. I'm going now. <laughs> Just a second. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. Wow. Wow. <laughs>